If you look at the, the history of flooding along the quays in Clonmel, uh, on average the quays there flood once out of every two years and in the past 10 years the quays have flooded eight of the, out of the last 10 years. So you can see it is a serious problem uh, and it is a miracle really that nobody has been killed there in the last 10 years or so. What we had to do was develop an understanding of the problem and define precisely the problem in Clonmel. We did this using hydraulic models uh, that uh, represented the flow of flood water through the river channels, the bridges and the floodplains of Clonmel. Uh, once we constructed our model, we were able to put in an extreme flow event into the model to see how it behaves, how the town behaves in an extreme flood event. So once we, we know what the damage is for an extreme event, we calculate the cost of defending the area for the extreme event. We compare then the cost, versus the cost of the scheme versus the benefit of constructing the scheme, which is the damage avoided as a result of constructing the scheme. So when we compared those two figures, we found that for every one euro that you spend on f flood defences in Clonmel, you prevent three euros worth of damage in the town. So obviously the scheme was worth doing, it, was, it represented good value for money. River engineers traditionally will look at addressing a flood problem by improving the efficiency of the flood channels for conveying flood flow. That usually involves deepening and widening of the river channels in an area. Now in this instance we decided not to go with that option because it would have very serious environmental impacts on the habitats of species that live in the river and on the riverbanks. We chose to address it using flood walls and embankments. Now our calculations told us that in order to prevent flooding in Clonmel we needed to construct flood defences 2.7 metres high along the quay in Clonmel. That's nine feet in old money. Uh, from our consultations with the local uh, people, we understood that that would not be acceptable. So we had to look at alternatives. The proposal we came up with was uh, to construct a low level 1.2 metre high uh, quay wall and put demountable flood defence barriers on top of that wall when uh, required when, when there was a flood warning. Many areas of Clonmel had become kind of derelict no-go areas because they suffered from frequent flooding. Those areas now will not suffer from frequent flooding and will now become suitable areas where people can set up new businesses or, or construct new residences. Many local businesses are operating now without insurance, but now that the scheme is complete, they will be able to insure their business against uh, many risks that they may be exposed to. This all adds up to making Clonmel a much more uh, attractive place to, to do business and we would expect that this will contribute to Clonmel realising its full potential in terms of development as a regional centre located strategically as it is between Waterford and Limerick. Through our work in Clonmel we work very closely with the community and we've had to go down and study past flood events in the immediate aftermath of events and we've witnessed the devastation that flooding causes in Clonmel. So, we would see that people's houses are, are ruined as a result of a flood. Um, their livelihoods are disrupted. Shops or places of people where people would work would be closed for weeks on end. And also, it, the things you might not realise is that when a flood comes into your house, priceless mementos can be destroyed, like photo albums and, and videos that you might have. They'd all be ruined and gone forever. The real benefit of the, the scheme in Clonmel is that the community now operates th with peace of mind. It's a peace of mind that they derive from the fact that they won't have to leave their homes at a moment's notice this winter because the shore is in flood. The one thing that kind of stands out in my mind in terms of uniqueness is uh, the dry bridge. The dry bridge uh, was an old stone structure that didn't operate very efficiently at conveying flood flow through it and it was also in danger of collapse but it was very important to the, the local community, it was, it was a focal point for the community, it, it had historical importance. What we designed was a, a really nice, a beautiful reinforced concrete bridge structure with glass panels, uh, glass parapets that maintained the connection between the community and the river. And the community were able to contribute to the, the construction of the bridge in uh, contributing to the etchings that have been put onto the, the glass parapets. So there are images that are, are relevant to the local area put onto the glass panels. And there are also anecdotes written on the panels, etched into the panels. 
uh, that people would, the memories that they used to have of the dry bridge and of the river in general. We designed the parapet so that in a flood event they could be folded down flat on the deck and allow flood flow to come across the, the, the bridge. This led to lower flood levels upstream of the bridge and, and lower flood risk. So th the unique feature of this scheme, I think, is the dry bridge because it's a flood scheme and we've built a bridge that's designed to flood. The Clonmel Flood Relief Scheme should win the Engineering Excellence Award because it protects thousands of people from flooding, it will help Clonmel to develop to its full potential and it is very good value for money.